Thanks for the introduction and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank our uh, China Oxford Scholarship Fund for providing the oh, sorry, sorry, uh, for provide, providing the uh, generous scholarship for to support my research. Today, I'm going to talk about my research, which is real time three D tracking and reconstruction. So, the first question when people ask about my research is always, "What do you want to do?" So I would like to answer that question with a fancy video. So this is what we want to do, of course, in the future. This is not my video, this is a video clip from the Iron Man, right? You can see it's Tony Stark is con uh, controlling the, his high-tech computer with his own hand. But aside from the uh, holograms, which I can't do, of course, uh, the technology behind all these Fancy videos is actually 3D hand tracking and gesture recognition. If you can precisely recover the position of your hand and the gesture, you can actually control your computer in this way. Okay? Um, of course, 3D tracking and post estimation, they are both computer vision problems. So we are going to go back to something which is boring. What is computer vision? According to Wikipedia, computer vision is a field that includes methods for acquiring, processing, analyzing, and understanding image and in general high dimensional, high dimensional data from real world in order to produce numerical or symbolic information, for example, the forms of decisions. I'll translate that into English now. So, this is a picture with a cute little girl in there doing exercise. This is what we humans see. But what computer sees is just a data matrix which contains numbers, makes no sense. What computer vision do is to extract higher level information out of this low level image data. For example, you can recognize, computer vision can recognize this is a baby girl, can recognize that's a dumbbell, and the number on that is 0 .02, uh, 0 0.2. And for even more uh, like complicated machine learning method, you can learn that the concept, the semantic concept that this girl is doing exercise and she's very cute. Okay. So no going a bit further now we're gonna talk about what we do, what I do. It's really tracking. This is the first half of the title. So what is really tracking? It's actually answering the question, where is the object in the image? So we're gonna use this as the example again. So a 3D tracking problem in this single image would be given the knowledge, given the shape of this dumbbell, tell me the 3D location of the dumbbell, assuming that there is a 3D coordinate in this world, saying that corner of the uh, room being the origin of the, the 3D coordinate, and uh, you want to know the 3D translation and the rotation around 3 axis of that object exactly. You want to recover that from image or other sensor data. So what can you do with 3D tracking? And the answer is, of course, a lot of things. So now I'm going to give examples with real videos. So in this video, I'll show that on the left side, you see the original video sequence. On the right side, you see the <coughs> tracking result visualized on the original one. This is tracking two feeds, two, interactive, two interacting feeds. So as they move, the position Translation and rotation of the feet is accurately tracked, and you see there are interactions between the two feet have occlusion, like, like missing data, but it's still working fine. This is a, the first example. So, what can we use that for? For example, home, rehabilit home rehabilitation. So, health healthcare in uh, Europe, in the UK, is very, very expensive. For those stroke patients, they usually take their uh, rehabilitation therapies in the hospital where there are uh, doctors and nurses to take care of them. However, if you can move them back to home and give them a computer, and if they can do rehabilitation at home without going to the hospital, it will save a lot of money for the healthcare problem. And what we do here is to let the patient, this is not the patient, this is a postdoc in my <laughs> my dad, he's performing, he will be performing things, but it's, you know, yeah. Uh, so what we can do is we can accurately track the, the feet motions and give those information as a live feed to the health hospital side, so that doctors can monitor the rehabilitation therapies remotely. So we're we are giving the doctor not only those visualizations in there, we're actually telling the, uh, the doctors how many uh, centimeters exactly did the patient raise their feet and how many degrees are they rotating their feet so that 
the doctors can evaluate whether the patients are doing their rehabilitation therapy correctly. This is with computer vision technology. So these are just some like sample exercises where uh, a stroke patient might need to do. And this is the next example, is tracking two pieces of generic objects. In this case, it's like two pieces of sponge. And the results uh, are visualized on the right frame. So people might think it's quite easy to work this out because it's basically two pieces of sponge and a two-year-old kid can find where it is. But actually, it's quite difficult from a computer vision point of view because they have identical appearance model and identical shape. Uh, it's, you need to tell the computer how to figure out the location and how to figure out the motion of the two objects. As you can see, the, the, the two pieces of spawn are closely interacting with each other with a lot of self-occlusion, but it's still tracking correctly. What can this be used to used for? Okay, so you might have the experience of playing uh, motion-related uh, motion games like the Wii sports games. And what you need to play those games is, if you're on a PS station, a PlayStation, you need this PlayStation Move, right? If you're using a Wii, you need a Wii Remote. But if you imagine you can just go into your kitchen, grab a piece of sponge, put it on the chopsticks, and you go back to your gaming room, and then you just save people, kill things in the wonderful gaming world with a single piece of sponge, how wonderful would that be? This is only a simple, uh, simple visualization of uh, tracking that piece of sponge and you use that to control the game. Well, that's actually not really playing a game, it's showing the results of the tracking. Okay, so now we arrive at the hand tracking. In this video, I'm tracking two hands with a fixed articulation uh, pose. So by articulation, you mean, I mean, the, the hand structure is quite uh, complicated and intricate. I'm only tracking a fixed pose, but the same method could apply for uh, articulated objects if you have a more complicated model. As you can see, these interacting hands are tracking simultaneously. And what, it, what that could be used for is, of course, human-computer interaction. So imagine if you can track the feet, a hand uh, at real time precisely, you can actually use your own desktop as your computer desktop. And this is showing the concept of using your own desktop to do a uh, game review. So you can put the uh, uh, jets, like spaceships, in your game and put it on your hand and pretending it's flying. <laughs> Although it's not, right? You can, you can see it from various angles. And then, if you change to another game, it's the reflection. This is, sorry, the video is a bit slow, but... You see the idea. So now you can rotate your planet and see from various angles. This is very similar to what Tony Stark do, it's just his is more fancier. This is all possible just because you can track the hand in 3D. So alternatively, you can also use your hand to do the drawing, but not only in 2D, because you can track an extra dimension in 3D. You can actually do 3D drawing, like this it's gonna show in a moment. So you can actually lift things up in a third dimension and maybe also put it in your hand. So what computer is only on this side? Yeah, it changes a bit because of my visualization, so to move the object. Okay. So now we are done with the tracking part. So what does the second part do? What does 3D reconstruction do? Is to answer the question, how to obtain 3D models. So as a matter of fact, all the previous tracking were possible because we already know the 3D shapes, the 3D model of those objects. But the problem comes back to the origin. How do we obtain these 3D models if we do not know the objects? You can choose to use professional 3D scanners. It's like industry level. This 3D scanner is called Spider and it costs $20,000 each unit. It can scan very intricate objects in real, almost real time, give very, very good results, but not really everyone can afford that. If you only want to track a piece of sponge, why would you spend 20,000 pounds on this one? And question 
becomes how can we find some low cost solution for that? Thanks for the technology in the uh, camera and sensor, we have this amazing Xbox uh, Kinect, which is a new camera. And it, it costs you 200, $250 each unit. And it not only gives you a color frame, it also gives you a depth frame. What is oops, sorry. So what is in here is each pixel correspond to the distance from the camera to you. So uh, from from this object to the, the camera center actually. So white color correspond to further away and dark uh, red color correspond to pixels that are clearer to the uh, uh, nearer to the camera and the, the black it is the missing data because it's a, it's a structured light uh, camera which has missing data. So with both the color information and the depth information, actually we can do some amazing thing on 3D reconstruction. The easiest way of reconstructing a 3D, uh, a, 3, a small object you would think of is just to you take the object in front of the camera, you rotate it, you move it, then it becomes reconstructed, right? And this is what we have achieved. So in the middle frame, we show the reconstruction result up to the current frame. The left frame shows the original video. And the right one is the visualization of the 3D embedding function, which we use to represent the shape in 3D. Well, you can see uh, roughly the shape of the, the, the shoe in here. This video, we use this model for the fit tracking, the first uh, tracking sequence. So this is the reconstruction result. So it's much, not much details in here, but you can still use it for tracking. So in this one, I was re reconstructing a piece of sponge that I used for the sword game. This is rotated in front of your camera, and this really shape is recovered over time incrementally. And this is the reconstruction result. Of course, there are some arrows in behind because the camera actually didn't observe in, uh, enough information from behind, but it's, it can be easily removed with some post processing or if you let the camera to observe the object for long enough. So this is reconstructing my hand. You just have to move your hand in front of the camera slowly with every view. Then your hand is just simultaneously reconstructed with tracking. And this is the reconstructed hand model. It's quite coarse but still usable for tracking. So someone may say that 250 pounds for a camera is still quite expensive. Can we do like even lower cost solution? The answer is actually yes because you have your mobile phone. And in order to do that, we have to take advantage of the gyro, which is the uh, gravity sensor in your phone, tells you the rotation, and the accelerometer, which tell you, tells you which direction your phones are moving towards. And this is an app that we developed on iPhone 5, though it's a very good phone. It's more expensive than that. You can actually <coughs> reconstruct an object on a phone by just repeatedly filming it. This is filming a shoe. And the right part is the reconstruction result up to the current frame. Now it's not reconstructing anything, but after you move it around for a while, you can see the shape of a shoe. And after the reconstruction is completed, you can visualize it from your phone as well. We'll be shown in a second. Okay. But now you can see the 3D model of your shoe, which is not very accurate, but still you get the shape of the shoe, which you can be used for tracking. So next part, so because that video is very small, we, we will, in this one I'll visualize the same thing, but in a larger frame. This is uh, reconstructing a horse toy, which is this one, on your phone. You just take the phone, film it repeatedly, and put it in a clear white ground and after a while you get the 3D shape of it. And actually you can so this is a 3D printout app of that model that we obtained from the 3D reconstruction. So imagine that you might be able to just walk into a museum, there's valuable artifacts in there, you can't take them away. There's unique shape in there, but you can't take carry like a 3D scanner just to scan here. Right? You don't have you don't have a 3D scanner. You can just take up your phone walk around the artifact for like 10 minutes, maybe it's quite long, but still you can eventually get the 3D shape of the objects. So that's what we've been doing in 3D tracking and reconstruction. Thank you. So, uh,
Yeah, I can see one question in the back. And another question. Well, uh, oh, I can go. <laughs> Good. Um, it's, it's actually amazing that uh, you've been able to focus so far. I mean, at MIT and at uh, Harvard as well, you have a lot of people working with like, colors and fingertips, and the camera would pick up the different colors that you see on the outside of the room, and you can actually see what the user's pointing at. In yours, you don't actually use color at all. You actually have the image inside of the computer, and you can track the hand without any outside um, other mechanism on the hands or the body itself. Well, I was using a lot of information. I just didn't show directly in there. I, I know the appearance model of the hand. I have the 3D model of the hand. And plus, there is a constraint to say the hand is in a fixed pose. So I would say the problem itself is less complicated than tracking a full degree of freedom articulated hand. And I know the work that MIT do, they, they have a, like the color glow, color glow of hand tracking is very fancy. And that's in a way more difficult because they're tracking this uh, 27 degree of freedom of all the joints, joint ro uh, rotations. That is more, it's a like, higher dimensional problem than what we have here. But uh, it's like two, trend, uh, two uh, tracks of research. Yeah, so what you really do is that you have AI or you have a program that has a certain simple position for a hand or foot and it can track that individual position itself rather than like you had your hand like this. But if you suddenly changed it, would the tracking not work or would it sort of, it wouldn't be able to track it as easily? So uh, in that video, so we are assuming a rigid hand, but actually you can work with a uh, deformable or, or a motion of hand with different gestures, but you have to have the prior knowledge what those gestures look like, so that you can recognize different gestures and using different models to, to track them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you, you for final question, when you, you're using like, you're trying to like, um, a scan on your phone, yeah. the individual piece, it had like, sort of like, almost like a Play-Doh sort of thing that would go over it. How does it recognize the depth without it going to the other objects, like the table itself, or the objects behind it, because a camera like the iPhone, doesn't have two cameras like that connect, so it doesn't have a yeah. like, depth of field. So how is that possible? Well, yeah. That is really the novelty of that work. Okay. <laughs> that's the, that's why we got it published. So uh, tracking an, an unknown object in 3D with 2D images is very, very difficult. And in that work, in order to track it accurately, we take advantage of the accelerometer and the, and the, uh, the gyro, which give you the rotation. And what we ac only need to track accurately is the translation. So we update the appearance model, the knowledge of the appearance model of the object simultaneously with, this, with the tracking so we can have an accurate estimate of both the translation and the rotation. And the, we uh, accumulate all those geometry information in a 3D volume. Where to say this volume is likely to be inside object, that volume is to be outside of volume. And with all the accumulated objects, we figure out the shape. It's like an overtime accumulation. And which is frame, there are some arrows, but if you do it like 2,000 frames and, and all the arrows which just don't match it. And if it's similar color, then it's easier to pick up. Yes, of course. A similar color will give you a less complicated appearance model and it's well be easier. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, maybe just a quick question at the back. Quick question. Okay. Well, I'll try to make it quick. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like I, I'm doing quite similar work with you, but the method I'm using is just like I use like different cameras to capture the position of the. I'm using markers to attach on the skin, and I just try to reconstruct this really model like that. But for years, you just use one like two D image, and you just uh, uh, had, uh, hold it around around it, and then to reconstruct three D. Have you ever compared the how accurate it is for use? Because you know, like if for your method, if you try to attract like the uh, gesture like this, and you can track it, but if the gesture like this turns it into four fingers, you need to train that again, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, have you have you think about like if you train different models and like to train the computer? Oh, this is a gesture here, and then I train another model like this, and it could automatically detect it, right? I mean, yes, there yeah. actually is a, a, like two ways of doing this gesture recognition. You can either have a like fully articulated hand model where you track each single rigid part of your hand so that you don't requ actually require a recognition between different poses because you're tracking all the, all the possible poses. This is one method, one line of method. The other one is to do recognition at each frame to say whether I'm doing this, whether I'm doing this, 
or not. And we actually use the second class of method. We actually have a video, but I didn't bring here to distinguish between like three different gestures and tracking between those. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing is you pointed out that, that uh, you use those calibrated multi-camera marker system for reconstruction. I can make sure that your calibrated system is more precise than the light, low-cost version. Because the low-cost version is only a trade-off to say we don't have, what if we don't have this multi-camera uh, calibrated setup? Calibrated setup always gives you, so better setup, better, more observation obviously always give you better results. This is a guarantee, actually. Thank you.